controls in control against our ketosis debate and oh, keep going back and forth. That'll be easy. What is up, everyone? It is February 12th, 2012. This is State of the Game. I'm your host, J.P. McDaniel. And today on the show, we've got a honey badger, a pink one, and three other guests. I don't know where Tyler is. He had to dip out. Sean, um, not here. And it's like 6 a.m. or something for Artosis right now, so he won't be here either. But look who's here. But look who showed up, guys. It's yeah. Jeff and J.P. The huh. steadfast guy. Hmm. Hmm. Mr. Countability. Hmm. Mr. Dependability. There you go. Mr. Handsome. Mr. Depends. That's your nickname from now on, Jeff. I'll accept it. You'll accept it. All right, guys. So today on the show, uh, we're going to be talking about the MLG Online Qualifiers. Patch changes the official map pool for Season 6. Uh, we'll get Katz's thoughts on the scroll trick that uh, people have been doing with Infestors. Go over I am. Is it Sao Paulo? Yeah, I guess i got to go to Katz yeah. for this. Is that correct, Katz? Yeah. Sao Paulo. <laughs> okay. How do your people say it? <laughs> Sao Paulo. Sao Paulo. It's Brazil, they speak Portuguese. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They Sao in Peru, uh, they speak they speak they, Peruvian they, they, they as well. They don't speak you could Port call it St. Paul. You know what? At the end of the day, Kevin, we're crossing hairs. Okay, as far as I'm concerned, there's Spanish, and then there is French Spanish. And that is <laughs> the slight difference. Korean is a, just a dialect. Of you know what? At the end of the day, if I upset every single Brazilian, it's not that big of a deal. Most of them don't have internet. There you go. There you go. I will actually, actually agree with that. Let's move on with the show. I 100% agree. What have you guys been up to? It's been a while since we've done a state of the game. Uh, Jeff, I heard that I almost spoiled your marriage. What went on with the, or your soon-to-be marriage, I guess, as yeah. uh, your proposal went down? How's that going? And how badly did I almost fuck it up? <laughs> No, you're fine. Uh, for the, I mean, we were at Disneyland, so actually it's pretty easy to stay away from Reddit. Um, when you're on the happiest place on Earth, you don't typically go to the saddest place <laughs> on Earth. Um, so we, it was pretty easy not to see that thread. Um, it's going really well. Really excited. Obviously, this is a big step forward in our lives. And you know, uh, I appreciate your candor. If had it ruined it, maybe I'd have a different attitude. But it's yeah. really fine. Good. Well, I was I was pretty worried, man. As soon as I saw that go up on Reddit, I was like, God damn it. I might have just ruined Jeff's uh, proposal. So are we allowed to do a state of the game live from the wedding, Jeff? Can we broadcast we your marriage? You think it's going down? <laughs> yeah. How's your family feel about that and her family? And the dog. The dog seems excited. That's an interesting idea for them. Um, How does the family feel about the wedding? And the, yeah. Or all no, no, no. Us there. being at the wedding, man. Uh, a lot of people have been asking about it, and <laughs> Anne and I are thinking about it. She wants, um, like, it was actually, like, her initial idea. She's like, we should stream it. And I was like, okay. Yeah. But then I thought about it, and I was like, like, I do, we probably will end up doing it, but I'm a little bit lenient just because I don't want to invite all these stupid stream chat things to even be a part of it. And she's like, we'll just turn off the stream chat, and then I'll be like, well, then there's 12 people watching, so. Yeah. We'll see. We might just run just constant commercials. Just that, constant I'm, commercials. I'm down with that, man. On all the people. That'll pay for your honeymoon. Go. That's what it is. <laughs> you just We're thinking about it. We might, we might invite the internet to our wedding. And uh, hopefully, you know, it'll be, it'll be a first time thing. So it's either like we the could, coolest idea we've ever had or like one of the dumbest. We yeah. could run like the sickest commercials. Like when, when the priest asks, like, does anyone oppose? And you run a commercial. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That'd be sick. There you go. There you go. That's a good idea, actually. Cats, yeah, what have you so been up to, man? Um, just chilling, really. Just chilling. Just chilling. What tournaments oh, yeah. have you been playing in, man? Like, what have you been doing in the StarCraft II world? Uh, I've just been playing on the Korea ladder a lot and uh, uh, qualifiers for tournaments, I guess. I haven't been playing any of the daily tournaments or anything like that, really. So, but the improve I play quite a bit. Awesome, awesome. QXC, what have you been up to? We saw you at uh, one of the IEMs, correct? Yeah, how was that, yeah, man? Yeah, where I, where I 
did a fantastic job of winning one game. Nice. And losing six. Was, uh, <laughs> are, are you still kind of focusing and balancing school with uh, with StarCraft II at this point? Yeah, I graduated in May. All right. Do you think when you graduate, are you going to still be full-time now with StarCraft II, or how's that going to work out? Wait, wait, still be full time, JP. Let's. let's I mean, not, go full let's time. Let's not confuse people here. Go full time with StarCraft. Too. I have. I have never been full time. Yeah, I hope to go full time afterwards and actually, like, you know, win games and stuff. Awesome. I uh, I actually qualified for Sao Paulo, but I couldn't go. Just school and I don't think complexity was too happy about my performance in Kiev, and neither was I. There yeah. wasn't a whole lot of time to to fix the things that went wrong. Gotcha. Hey, you used to win games. Cats. <laughs> I don't get what it is. You're like you're pretty damn good in practice. Do you think is it nerves at all? Like when you're out of practice and you go to a tournament, do you think that catches up or what? It mm, no, it's a uh, it's an over practice thing. Uh, really? What I found is the more important the event is, the more I feel like I need to practice for it, and then I cross the threshold where the practice actually starts negatively impacting my ability to play. And then I stop doing everything that's not practice in like the week before the tournament, and it then I just end up going to the tournament and I'm too stressed out and not rested enough, so I usually play bad. Um, and that's so that's, interesting too, because people like think that doesn't exist. They're like, "What? You more practice and it doesn't help you? You should be able to practice forever." It's like, yeah, no. I don't. I don't you know, know people where. People don't that think jet don't think jet lag exists. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. In, in Kiev, I was. I fell asleep. I was like basically falling asleep as I was playing my games, and then I lost, and I like hit myself in the face and woke up a little bit, and then like almost fell asleep again. So, just uh, just getting all that together with school is really really hard. Like you have to basically, I have to get a week ahead in my classes while also being ready for a tournament, and then missing like three days of classes and getting back and being a week behind, and it's. Yeah, it's not easy. I mean, I, I have some sense of that. Uh, while I was in school, I was doing all the. I went to all the tournaments, like reporting and stuff on. But playing, I can't even imagine <coughs> how like frustrating that's got to be. Um, so we wish you luck, man. Hopefully, when you graduate, uh, you start playing full time and really start showing uh, what's going on in the QXE world. Because for a while there, at the beginning of the game, you were tip top shape. So I think you have a lot of fans out there, especially the chat, looking forward to uh, see what's uh, what's going on. But let's move on, talk about the patch 1.4.3 uh, preview blog that came out a couple days. I think this is what everyone wants to see us talk about. And guys, if you're lagging, I don't know what to tell you. We're not dropping frames or anything. It's on Twitch. Go tweet at Gunrun. Piss him off because I don't know. Yeah, yeah, Adam. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Just go blame Gunrun. But first part of the blog, uh, meals now harvest the same amount of minerals on both high yield minerals and normal minerals. Cats, you look excited. Yeah. Why Why so? I mean, it seems like tournaments kind of already solved this with just removing gold from uh, most of the maps. MLG's done it. GSL's done it. Thank yeah, but... Go, go ahead. I don't think that's much of a solution. I mean, the gold is a dynamic that this game has that, uh, you know, adds to the game. I mean, there's, there's a lot of strategy that comes with it, and there's a lot of maps that are balanced with the gold, except uh -huh. for when Terran just drops a thousand mules on it. So, like... You know, if someone wants to take a risk and take a fast gold, or it's in their strategy to do so, there shouldn't be, like, that extra advantage, or there shouldn't be a need to fix it by removing the gold. So, I mean, it's, I think it's a really good change. Yeah. Jeff? Uh, yeah. I mean, the window of time it, you had available to you to punish a Terran for dropping mules on a gold expansion was just simply too short, too small. A lot of times they could just take the base, drop four or five mules on there, and you have about five seconds before it's worth that moment. Um, I kind of, I mean, I, I, I share both the sentiments you guys were sharing. Like, tournaments have kind of removed gold, gold from the, the game, but I like what uh, Kat said, where, like, I would still like it if a map in the future found a way to utilize gold expansions in a really healthy way. And I, I don't think that they should be, like, corner expansions. I think they should be extremely exposed and really dangerous. So there's some risk to them, but then, like, if you're in a position, they're also like a nail in the coffin. You know, if you've earned the ability to hold a gold expansion, they're really powerful. I think that's kind of a cool use for them. So I don't want them to be removed from the game entirely. I just, I, I think it was ridiculous how good they were, you know. 
I, th I think Metalopolis and even NT are good examples of that. I think, you know, they're, they're out in the open, they're in the middle, they're, they're risky to take. And, uh, you know, they, 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 really, they really help the, the game play to be played by maps rather than by learning just one build and executing it. You know, like, if, if you play Sargon Antigua, you, like, you need Bridlords to break that middle, or you can't, and Terran has the siege tanks. Like, it, it, it like goes by time, like, middle dominance and stuff. But then, it's just the mules that fuck it up. So. <laughs> now, QXC, I've never done this before, but I want to get a Terran opinion on State of the Game as, <coughs> uh, as to this change. So what are your thoughts? Um, so the, like they said, removing the gold is the easiest solution. The, I guess the one thing that kind of bothers me about the gold bases and the argument that cats use, like, they're part of the game and so we should keep them around. Like, rocks are part of the game and I don't think we should keep them around. I find rocks to be stupid in one way. Like, I would be okay if they just removed gold bases altogether. Um, Who's he? In terms of... <laughs> whatever. The other thing that bothers me about the gold bases is right now I don't feel like they're put in positions that are particularly difficult or challenging to take. Like, if I can control the center in Metalopolis, then I get a gold base. And the center isn't particularly difficult to control compared to, like, if I can hold that middle spot, I can put siege tanks on the watchtowers, this is like TVT, TVZ, and I can, I can hold my gold base while denying my opponent's gold base in those matchups, which doesn't make a lot of sense, like, Zerg has been notoriously had lots of trouble breaking Terran gold bases on metal without broodlords, which seems kind of weird. Uh, and like the same thing on Antigua. The position I want to control most in that entire map is the center raised ground. And suddenly when I control the position I want to control anyway, I also get this other gold base advantage, which like doesn't make a lot of sense to me. If, if taking the gold base actually was a position that you didn't want your army to be anyway, then they would make more sense to me. Uh, in terms of changing how mules mine from gold, I don't know. I never play against Terran. Um, so I don't, I don't know what it feels like to be on the, the losing end of that. I know it feels pretty good when I do it. Well, but, I mean, like, maybe Metalopolis isn't the best example, but on Antigua, when you control the middle and when you're controlling that, like, the same thing happens for Zerg, and this is funny because you're defending defending Zerg, and I'm defending Terran. But like the the same thing happens to you when I get Burglars out, doesn't it? Like I, I get control of the middle, and then I get that that like my gold, and then I get to control the game. And also when you take the gold, like Ling Rumbais, does that not bother you? Like counterattacks, like your army is gonna be in the middle, sure, but I know where it's gonna be as well. You know, it's I don't know. The in terms of metal, like Broodlords are tier three. So if I take my gold pretty early, then I get that e economic advantage, and like, potentially I can use that to prevent you from breaking it with Broodlords. Like, I can mine it out, basically, by the time Broodlords come out. Yeah, um, if mules mine that much. But, like, doesn't it worry you? Like, what about Ling Rumbice, like, that go through your, through your natural third or stuff like that? Like, your natural expansion and all of your production is much more exposed when you take the gold. Like... Most Zergs won't try to exploit that, but, I mean, you don't think so? You don't agree with that? I mean, the the thing is, like, I can wall in my natural with depots and barracks, and if I have a unit in both of the lanes, like, it's not hard to know if a run-by is coming, and it's not like I need to pressure you once I've taken the gold, because I have an economic advantage. Yeah, meals are good. I mean, I, I, I think this is a nice step, too, to consider going into Heart of the Swarm. I'm looking at Terran players having those uh, shredders or whatever you know and and oh, yeah. I think this gets this issue gets ex uh, it grows right so if a Terran can absolutely control space cost effectively and take a gold expansion and drop mules on it I feel like that's that's too much in my opinion and obviously that's a subjective statement right like what is too much but uh, I really feel like the strength of the Zerg since Brood War has always been in speed and counter attacks and in options to get into places quick and, and hard. Take that statement for what you will. Um, <laughs> but when Terran has like super weapons that can control space and then super bases that uniquely benefit them more because their macro mechanic is about getting money fast, that's that's too much going in one direction, I feel. 
Yeah, I don't know how Shredders will impact the game. Can't really. I don't. The I way did. I've seen but the yeah. Shredders. I mean, <laughs> the Shredders only seem good against Zerg. From what it sounds like, because if if the units yeah. aren't in range, then they don't take damage. So like I'm, just, I think Marines outrange them, and Zealots just have too much health. Like I've seen Speedling run by get stopped by Shredders, but I've also seen like two Zealots run up and kill one. So I don't know. Oh, okay. Hmm. I guess we'll just really have to wait, wait for till, Heart of the Swarm. Yeah, wait till Heart of the Swarm to finish this conversation, I guess. Uh, moving along here, uh, there's only four changes, but the community already going crazy with just these uh, few little changes. Snipe damage changed from 45 to 25 plus 25 psionic. Uh, Jeff, I guess I'll go to you first with this, because it really only affects uh, Templars, and I guess Ghost v. Ghost Wars, but... It doesn't affect Templar. I would... I thought they're not psionic. Still two shots. It's it's oh. still two shots. So okay. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, it's 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 okay. very. And I'll just give my spiel on it before we go to the Zerg and Terran, because yeah. yeah. obviously I have more to say about it. But it's very specifically TBZ, and in my opinion, it's really interesting. It's um, Katz and I were talking about this earlier, and I'm going to go ahead and steal his thunder and and sweep the carpet out from under him. But um, I think it is too much, like to go from 45 to 25 against a Broodlord or Ultralisk. Um, I think almost everyone would agree that it was too strong of a counter to a certain extent, but I don't know that it was so hard of a counter that we had to nearly 50% um, nerf it, right? Because the Terran really, against a Broodlord army, has two answers, and that's Viking and Ghost. And then, of course, you can make an argument for positioning and, and you know, Stim Marines, good upgrades, that kind of stuff. Is, uh, that's all ways we've seen Broodlords die as well. But I feel like if a, if a Zerg army gets up to, like, 16 or 20 Broodlords, 15 or so Corruptors, and then 15 or so Infestors, um, it's going to be extremely difficult for the Terran army to whittle that down. And I'd be really interested to hear someone that says, no, I think it'll still be just fine. You actually just lose the game when that happens. Like, even, <laughs> it's, it's actually weird, you can even have like 15 or 20 Ghosts, if yeah. they have enough Broodlords, they just A-move over you. With Queens, you too. Yeah, you, you actually can't kill the Broodlords fast enough. They, like, kill your expansions, they kill all your ground army, and I don't know. I don't know how you deal with, with that many Broodlords and Corruptors. Um, okay, I think you might need to work on your snipes. I mean, I, I think Ghosts are the perfect counter to Broodlords. I don't know if you're getting, like, everything that you need to be getting. Nukes are all right, too, like, just, just for, for, like, breaking positioning. Broodlords are siege units, basically, but... Like just snipe is is ridiculously strong. If you if you just cloak a bunch of ghosts, like you can snipe the overseer right away, and then they have to fungal the ghosts. It's, it's not easy. Then you can snipe as much as you can, and just you know, then run in with a few marines, like Jeff was saying. Like Vikings will help out. I mean, I think I think that the maxed Terran army properly controlled right now is better in every way than the maxed Ser Serg army <laughs> properly controlled. Um, I think that the change is stupid, though, and I think it's way an over nerf. I, I'd be happy with them just changing it from 45 to 35 or 38 or something that's not just stupid. Haven't they said before that the the way that they patch thing is usually to over nerf nerf it and then kind of step back? I, I feel like they've gone on that the record and the said that they, they that's like how they balance things. I mean, even if they have said that, I can't think of any change where that was actually the case. That's a good point. Damn. Damn it, QXC. <laughs> Kevin might be actually too smart for this Kevin, show. Kevin, you're actually... Next time. Yeah. You're, you're making it hard, Kevin. This is your That's fault. That's what she said. <laughs> Jesus. Um, I mean, the, the thing, too, and this is like a weird reminder, I guess, but there's so many times where, like, okay, I watch, like, select use ghosts, and I think... Holy shit, that is way too strong. That is insanely good. And obviously he's earning that with his skill, right? It's not, he's not easy buttoning something. He's actually just so good and has such good control that he makes them look that ridiculous. Um, and then I see some very good Terran players that get all their ghosts fungled and then they get banelinged or they get smashed by uh, a wave of broodlings. And then they, like, I, I, I have to imagine that, of course, in the heat of battle, they're not really realizing this, but in retrospect, they have to understand those ghosts were their entire existence, right? Like, if you if you go ghost to counter Broodlords, and then you lose the ghost, you have nothing. Unless the Zerg makes a horrific mistake, Infestor Broodlord should never lose. Ever. 
to a non, like, ghost army, or, I don't know, just hordes of Vikings, and then even then, I feel like the Zerg has to make a mistake for the Vikings to work out the way they should. Um, so I, I don't know, like, this has happened before, but, like, Terrans and Zerg and Protoss, all of us, we've gotten a nerf or a buff, and then people start to only then start paying attention to that. So yeah, maybe true. with the nerf to ghosts, I don't know, um, maybe Terrans, like, flock to a different angle, so maybe a, we're going to see, like, five or six Thors in an army composition softening up oh. the anti-air. Um, I'm not saying <laughs> that's problem, great. I'm, I'm spitballing here. That is, the big problem with that is that's what Terrans did, and then they found ghosts. And, yeah, like... Or, Thor's are I, I, like, since the beta, like, they're like, what the fuck, Riddler's so OP. I'm like, hey, dude, just get Ghost. That's so stupid, and now everyone loves Ghost, <laughs> and now Ghost is OP, and they're, like, nerfing it, so... But yeah, I mean, spread out Vikings, Thor's workout. Thor's on paper should be Riddler's when they're, like, you know, in uneven numbers, but they will never do that, because they can never get close enough, because of the Riddlings. Maybe stylistic yes. they change, like, there's no head-on collision between the Super Army of Zerg and the Super Army of Terran, like, maybe it's triple medevac drops in two different places type of weird stuff. Like, the Zerg army I mean, that, is that so works too. slow. It's so slow when it's at that stage, right? Um, I don't know. I, I, and I, I, you had mentioned it, but I think it deserves more recognition too. Morrow, the way he uses nukes, I watched Greg, and I've seen Greg get mad. I've seen Greg get pretty <laughs> damn mad. When he played against Morrow, I can't remember what it was for. It was on Shakir's Plateau, which has obviously now become a big Terran map versus Zerg. Um, the way he used defensive nukes Oh my god. You know, like, nuking bases is great, but nuking the space where a Broodlord army is incoming and then pushing yeah. it back and then kiting it with Vikings, this is some of the sickest crap I've ever seen. And uh, kind of cool stuff like that I feel like Terrans could explore and, and utilize. And, you know, like, even the guy on the show, Kevin, I feel like you have the multitasking control to really crush some frustrating zergs with that. Yeah, I saw Moro do that against uh, Lenok as well and beat him with it. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, nukes are, nukes are yeah. pretty underused as well. They're, yeah. They're amazing. It's true. Yeah. That's they're pretty cheap, too. Under yeah, 100, they don't take up supply. Yeah, yeah, they don't take up supply. That's funny. <laughs> QXE, your uh, thoughts? Yeah, well, I was going to address... Jeff was talking about a stylistic change. It's the kind of thing that you can do against weaker Zergs. Like, if I play a, a Zerg on ladder, who's, for whatever reason, he catches me off guard, he's got Broodlords and I don't have the proper stuff, I pick up, I go four medevacs, I drop in four different locations, and I beat him through my multitasking. But against a Zerg with equal multitasking, like, they still have some infestors. It doesn't take a lot of infestors and a lot of speedlings or bandlings to, to clean up a drop. And a good Zerg also has spine crawlers at all their expansions. Right. The, the one thing, this is kind of off topic, but we came to this point anyway, is Terran doesn't have a cheap way to defend bases that doesn't cost supply, like the other races do. Like planetary fortresses? I said cheap. <laughs> like, we don't have cannons, we don't have spine crawlers, and you can't always fit planetary fortresses in the way you want, because they're too big, and they're, they're blocked by the minerals and the gas. And so, uh, just sometimes late game, it gets really hard to to, you sure. think like, oh, we both have a maxed out army, I should be able to pressure him in a whole bunch of locations, but all of his bases have three spine crawlers and one infester, and it, it, it becomes hard to manage that correctly, splitting your units up so you don't get fungal to death, stuff like that. Have you tried, like, dropping all of your tanks when you see Birdlords? Like, just pick up all the tanks and medevacs and dropping them? Uh, and dying to speedlings? I don't see what the point of that would be. Okay, all your tanks and eight marines? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, tanks are worthless when that happens, and then you can replace them by units that are actually going to help you against the burglars. And they can't do damage. They break buildings pretty fast. I don't know, like, I don't know, like, if you watched, uh, I don't know what it was for, but, like, Cass against Chef had, like, an hour and something, an hour maybe TVZ, and just, like, I don't know, they're both pretty good, and they both, like, took their half of the map, and Chef did what you're supposed to do and just max them Riddlers and Corruptors and Infestors and Cast just had a lot of Ghosts and Planetary Fortresses and Marines and he won. I mean, you know, infest like Ghosts have EMP as well. Like, Infestors are not gods. Yeah. Okay. But what's the point you're actually trying to make? 
<laughs> I don't know. You seem you seem to be you seem to be thinking that like this Bridler army is invincible. Like Jeff brought up like selects control. I don't know. I <sighs> I You're think I think that at the highest level, ghosts like the term maxed army is better than the Cirque maxed army for sure. That's all I'm saying. I was I was more just trying to talk about how I don't think it's it's necessarily always an option to just split your army up and try to abuse the mobility of the Broodlords. I get that. Just because of spine crawlers, spore crawlers, like one infester is really supply efficient for what it what it can defend. In terms of taking on the maxed army at Zerg, I mean, really it's it's gotten to the point where if you make thirty ghosts and Zerg doesn't crash, like the thing about ghosts and I think we're going to talk about this a bit. JP, you talked about the, the scroll wheel with infested. Yeah, yeah. Let's, I mean, bring it up here if you want, man. Yeah, well, I was going to talk about the scroll wheel with snipe. You can snipe, like, ten times faster than, than you would be able to normally. And so, like, one of the difficulties with snipe is if they take their whole army and just the moment they get in range, they just attack you, you don't really have time to snipe all the ultralists and all the, the broodlords or whatever. But if you can get into the stagnant position where they don't have the option to just crash on your army, that's when ghosts are really most effective. Cats? I don't know I don't know why I made that point. Yeah, it got really quiet. I thought we dropped from the call. Yeah. yeah um, <laughs> I don't I don't know, I was talking what do you think about the wheel scroll wheel? Like, yeah. <laughs> is, is it legal, Kevin? Like, do you have to use a third-party program user? We talked about this a little bit, I thought. but um, I think... The way it works is if you if your mouse has drivers, then you should be able to rebind things with that, and then you can like my my razor mouse. I downloaded the drivers for it, and I can rebind the scroll wheel to be left click or right click yeah, or whatever. Yeah. And so I think most tournaments allow you to install drivers for your mice. It'll do that, that for sure. Yeah, that would make it legal. Uh, no, it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be legal. That that's retarded. Why? What do you mean, why? Because it just makes the game so much easier. It takes so much from the game that, like, someone in gold can snipe better than MVP makes no sense to me. It's, like, it's, it's in, like, snipe, burrow, blink, infested, drop infested turns, like, shit like that shouldn't just be automatic, you know? Shouldn't be something that you just do. It's something that you, like, if I'm burrowing roaches, I'm burrowing roaches instead of macroing up as, as well as I could be. You know, like, and, and if someone's faster than me, then they should take advantage of that. Like, you can just take mechanics off of the game and make the game easier for everyone. Like, if everyone starts using will scroll, scroll wheel, or whatever, it just fucks up the game. And it, it would make it so that ghosts are OP, and infest infestors not so much. But, yeah. it's. I kind of I mean, feel, I agree with what Katz is saying. It just kind of, like, delegitimizes the tip-top players, because then it becomes such a easy, non-mechanical thing to do. It's just, they scroll their mouse wheel and they're already the fastest that you can be. At one point we brought up on Inside of the Game 2 that I thought was kind of compelling, um, and ironically Greg brought this up, was <laughs> the uh, racial balance of it. Like, Terran definitely benefits from the snipe. Zerg, I think we'd all agree to a lesser extent, but still benefits from sure. infested Terran. Protoss could speed Chrono Boost, or... <laughs> like speed force field, man. <laughs> Just fucking lay force fields all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> just sets up a forest of force fields. You would act. You just roll the dice, man. You see if the force fields are gonna land in the right yeah. place. You lose. You get one. one of those big, stupid. Uh, what do they? They call it like the cat instead of the mouse. It's called a cat. That mice. That mouse is just a giant ball. <laughs> and that'll be my fucking <laughs> fucking force field. God, I got in control again. <laughs> just force fields everywhere. Uh, Jeff, I mean, do you think you think it should be legal in tournaments? I think if you have to use a third-party program to do anything in this game, it should be illegal. I think if you can do it through the game itself, then the people that run tournaments need to take an approach ethically as to whether or not it's good. So there have been things like in the past, Mutilus stacking and Brood War, everyone agrees, made the game better. Because sure. people who um, had the APM and the control to utilize Muta stacking benefited from it. It made the game more difficult. But also through practice, it wasn't like Terran players stopped winning. Yeah. Right. Flash is still probably undisputedly the best player to have ever played, as well as a ton of other Terran players. But with this kind of a thing, we have to ask ourselves, and this is getting away from the third-party program thing, so I'm still not 
I haven't heard a definitive answer if you can or cannot with it, but let's assume you, you can do it without a third-party program. Um, then we have to look at it ethically. Does this make the game harder and better for people? I mean, harder is, I guess, my own little bias, but does it make the game better? And if people are more excited about um, machine gun sniping and, and perfect investitarians, invest then, like, my personal opinion about that would be, once again, we're making it so it's more accessible to play this game at a higher level. I don't have to have Selects, Control, or APM. I could just hotkey it to my mouse wheel and then flick my finger, and now I'm, I'm better than Select in that regard, right? Yeah. And I don't like that. I feel like one of the discomforts as a Brood War player I've always had about StarCraft Two was that there was too many things that made it indistinguishable between a Nest T level game and a Bronze level game. And obviously, this was a lot of the stuff we talked about in the beta, and time has proven that StarCraft Two, while not quite as hard as Brood War, is still hard enough where a top-level game looks extremely different from other people, right? Right. But still, I'm wondering if we should ever retroactively move away from that and start getting easier, and little things like this get discovered. And in my opinion, the community should always look at it through the lens of, does it make the game easier? If you check yes, then you shouldn't do it. It shouldn't be allowed. It's it's not just that, but you would need you would probably need new balance for the ghosts as well. Like it's it's like having a button that lets you use all of your energy. Like it's you know it's gonna be one ghost for for a brigade or, or an ultra every time, just like automatically. It's it's just silly. The the one thing okay, so there's there's one thing that we haven't really brought up is even if you're using the mouse wheel scroll, you still have to have the mouse accuracy to click on individual targets. And you still have to know the timing of when you switch targets. That's true. Um, My argument was non-unique, though. You already have to have those things. Now it's about how fast you click the mouse, though, right? Yeah, except the timing is a little different because so. And there's there's one other thing that we haven't talked about, which you probably don't know unless you play Terran, is if you cast snipe too quickly, then your ghost will actually overwrite the previous snipe command and not cast it. So I if have you have like a lot if you have. Yeah, if you have two ghosts and you hit R really fast, you actually don't end up doing any damage at all. Um, I haven't actually used the mouse wheel scroll, but the, it could be that if you don't scroll at the correct frequency, then you actually re like stop doing damage. But I think you're you're probably the the most interesting point is Katz's in that it it changes the balance of the unit. It'd be like all of a sudden if we found a way that Marines did. Eight damage base instead of six, like everything would be different, and you'd have Kevin. to, yeah. Or that they auto that stutter the steps. Scariest thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> <laughs> you just, you just like, like there's like a crate on every map that the Terrans just find, like in Command and Conquer, and it's like <laughs> plus two attack to the base damage of Marines. <laughs> like that, that kind of thing is like when they when they buffed Phoenixes to attack while moving. It's kind of the same thing. It it would be a buff. Without there being a buff, it's deep. <laughs> what? That is deep. I don't understand what you said. <laughs> <laughs> really? Type one in chat if you understood. What the fuck? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Mostly, yes. There would Sweet. be a buff without there being a buff. I actually here's another answer yeah. by the way to go back a little bit that we didn't talk about surprisingly, and I'd love to hear your thoughts, Kevin. There is this thing that some Terrans have been doing. Okay, you take the starport and you swap it off the reactor and you put it on a tech lab. Don't go Banshee, though. And you actually make Ravens off the <laughs> Those are good, too. Yeah, those and were And then, the wait for it. You actually have to upgrade this nuclear missile that comes from the air called the Hunter-Seeker missile. Or I think they changed the name of it, whatever. Or is it just still Hunter-Seeker? Anyways, <laughs> that's a really good answer to Brew Lords, is it not? It is, yeah. Uh, probably. I've never... <laughs> Since I discovered ghosts, I decided that I didn't need ravens. That's, so that's probably Kevin. The you are the one percent. You are the one percent. <laughs> Do you understand this? <laughs> Occupy Kevin, 2012. There you go. There you go. All right. So I f I feel like Katz and Jeff are on, and maybe QXC as well. Everyone thinks that we should not allow that in tournaments, right? If it's a third party software. If it breaks the unit, makes it more overpowered than it actually is. It's third party. You agree though, right, Kevin? If third party. Uh, yeah, if third party, definitely it should not be allowed. Like, I, okay. I agree on that point 100%. There should be no... Because if you start allowing third party, then you start allowing macros, and there's yeah. no real... Yeah. There's no there's line no end. To Yeah, yeah. Then everyone like, has to buy a razor. <laughs> <laughs> God save it, so... This was actually a ploy by the marketing team of Razor 
to just sell more <laughs> units, man. We'll make the game worse, and then they'll have to buy our product. <laughs> Soon exactly. everyone will be worse for it. <laughs> exactly. Um, I guess the, the part where we disagree is, is whether or not, if you don't have to use a third party, Kevin, is it safe to say that you'd be okay with... I mean, obviously you're not like, absolutely, you're, you're saying it'd be worth experimenting with, right? Yeah, I would consider it. It'd be like when July discovered muta stacking. If all of a sudden people are like, oh my god, mutas are so much better than we thought they were, and how could they possibly be balanced with if they're stronger than before, so we have to nerf them? Like, at least give it some time to see how it works out. What about, like, uh, Lurker uh, hold positioning? Dude, that was sick. Sick. That was illegal, that was, wasn't it? I, yeah, it was, it was illegal, wasn't it? I don't think it was. Really? I don't. I don't even know what Brood War is, so... <laughs> Which one? What are you asking? <laughs> Lurker, uh, hold Lurker hold position. No, that was always okay. It was argued for a while. What was outlawed was allying your opponent. Oh, oh that's yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but you could do it one of two ways. You could hotkey, or you could bind it and then hold position to an overlord, or you could actually just spam hold on a lurker. And both of them had the same effect, but the overlord one was the most popular. And it was a bug, because obviously, who the hell... Like, the game's not like, yeah, if you actually hotkey a <laughs> lurker to an overlord... It's on the, I mean, it's on the game tip. <laughs> it, the way it works is the overmind's mind with the overlord. It gets... It's, uh, it channels into the lurker. Is this and Browder? Harper. Who is this? Who is this? <laughs> That's that? probably Browder. Okay, that was Browder. No, it could have been Browder. Because he didn't work on Brood War. True. That was just like, that was Mr. Mr. B uh, Blizzard. Mr. Blizzard. Okay. Mr. Blizzard. New superhero born. Uh, going back to that, the change, uh, uh, just across the board real quick. Yes, no, Jeff, should the change stay? Should it be reduced? Should it not be there at all? Uh, snipe? Yeah, the snipe change. In my opinion, it shouldn't. It, I would echo Cat's sentiments. It should be reduced, but not nearly as severely as they did. I would be totally cool. And I don't know the math, so any number I pick is going to be arbitrary, but I would like it if it took like a couple extra snipes, or one maybe, to kill a Broodlord or something like that. But it, it, I can't remember what the number was. It jumped up to like 12. three or four. <laughs> yeah, it went from like 9 to 12, I think, right? <laughs> no, 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 no. It, it went it from jumped like, by like 10. It's yeah, like yeah, 11 it, it's to ridiculous. 20 ridiculous. or something. Oh. Yeah, well, that's like that's hilarious. Yeah. yeah, like three or four more snipes, I'll be happy with. Yeah. So cats, not not in agreement with this change then. No, it's silly. QXC. Um. Okay, so. Uh oh. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna just talk for a little bit here, and you're all gonna listen. Okay. It's gonna be fun. Here we go. So, Reducing the amount of damage on snipe by a little bit seems okay. I like the idea of increasing the plus psionic because now we can two-shot infestors instead of three-shotting them, which is a definite advantage. The one thing that really bothers me about this change is that they're not giving any regard for how ghosts might be used in other situations. And in doing so, they're basically saying that you're not going to use ghosts in other situations. If all of a sudden Snipe does 25 damage, situations where ghosts might have been useful, suddenly they aren't useful at all. Um, and I'm going to use... I've been doing a build in TVT for the last month or so where I go fast ghosts. And you can one-shot Marines, you can almost one-shot Reapers, you can basically three-shot build orders. So you anyways, I've been, I've been doing this build, and it's my build... Um, <laughs> and it's things like that where if they reduce the ghost damage to 25, then all of a sudden you can't you can't use ghosts in TVT. You can't. It's not cost efficient at all to be two shotting marines. You can't really then in in TVP. <clears throat> the only thing that would really change is now instead of maybe using ghosts to snipe zealots as extra DPS, you can't. It's not worth it, ever. Like, you do... It would almost never be a good use of your energy. And these are all other situations that are negatively affected by the proposed change, but aren't actually mentioned as being problems by Blizzard. Like, they didn't say that, you know, ghosts are pretty pretty overpowered against Terran. We don't like how they function in the TVT matchup, so we're going to change that. Like, they're trying to change the relationship between ghosts and Tier 3 Zerg, and the way that they propose to change it 
is going to just make Ghost practically useless in terms of snipe in TVT and TVP, uh, except for High Templar, of course, but like that's going to stay the same. And so probably my... If I were to do this change, what it would be is probably 50 base damage on snipe and maybe minus... 10 or minus 15 to massive units. That way you still get, you give Terran a little bit of something so that they can still two-shot infestors. You make Broodlords and, and Ultralists take less damage because they're both massive, and you still allow Ghosts the potential of being used in other situations. You're still one-shotting Marines, you're still doing a lot of damage to Marauders, you're doing a lot of damage to Reapers. Uh, against Zerg, you can still one-shot Banelings, which sometimes is used late game. You still do a decent amount of damage to Mutalis, and potentially now you can, you're can you doing a little bit of extra damage to Zealots in TVP. A situ These are all situations where we haven't really seen Ghosts being used, but if they make the change the way that they want to, with the 25 base damage, we're not going to see Ghosts here. And, and that's what really bothers me. So your answer is no. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> Damn um, it! They yeah. always they always do that. Though. That's I mean that's that's how they they always address any changes. Like they they did the same for immortals. Immortals were to address one one one, and it, it it I mean it it kind of helps them a lot against roaches, which is like the most common unit in ZVP. Um, they did the same thing with warp gates to address PvP. I mean they're always gonna do it like that. I think. Right, but they in this situation they don't have to do it like that. Like if they just change the way the numbers are work and have it be a minus to massive, then you can leave everything intact and still still fix the area you want. I agree. Minus to massive. Yeah, that's pretty easy actually. Okay, we uh we rape David Kim. <laughs> <laughs> that sums up the raping of David yeah. Kim segment. Let's move on. Oh my god. <laughs> To the uh, the next change, the other word change, APM, CPM change, is not really the biggest thing, but uh, Phoenix now has a range upgrade at the Fleet Beacon, and it will now have six <coughs> attack range after purchasing an upgrade. What is that up from? Is that up from four? Four. Four, four. yeah. Four. Really from four? Yep, it's a double. So, Jeff, we'll let you start off with as the resident Protoss player here. I mean... Having okay, so just my knee-jerk response, and having not played it yet, I think it's too much. Um, it was already so that with good control, you were going to take fewer hits against Mulus, and obviously what that translated to playing it um, not with land latency was that uh, Phoenix were kind of they were kind of a silly counter to Mulus just because you either had enough where you crushed the Mutilus, um just because you've you've like invested that much or they get up a certain number of mutas and now your phoenix are very situational so like if his mutas get whittled down or if you have storm to guard you um, that's all cool and I was okay with that I, I, like at first I bitched and moaned but um, I thought there was other areas we could take a look at as a better response or different play style or, or perhaps just more time um, in, in terms of handling mutas but for them to give a plus two range attack at the fleet beacon very much so says you're either going to heavily commit to that as a mid-game counter or it's like a natural late-game counter. But the plus two range on top of four means that Phoenix go from like a pretty cool counter to, to Muta's to like it would, we'd be laughing at the people that lost a Phoenix versus Muta battle, right? We'd be like, God, look at that terrible micro. You're so bad. Because I don't see how a Muta could ever hit a Phoenix again. So it's like the hardest of hard counters. Um, and I'm, I've always been hesitant with that kind of stuff, which I already felt like there was a little bit too much of in StarCraft 2, where it's like, you did this thing, cool, now I do this thing, and that thing you did is now obsolete. There's no reason for you to make another Mutalisk ever again. Um, and I would be interested to hear anyone that says they could still go Mutas against plus, six range Phoenix. Um, because I, I flat out am hitting you, and you're not hitting me. You know, like, how does that work out? So I'm not for it. I don't like it. I feel like I, I felt like Protoss is weak against the Mutalisk, but I feel like that could be a metagame thing, and perhaps that gets worked out a little bit as we go on. Maybe that could be a map thing, or maybe you could do slight, uh, much more subtle buffs to other areas of um, of the game for Protoss against Mutalisk. I'm not sure. Uh, 
Yeah. I mean, I, I personally don't like mutas all that much in, in CVP. Um, I feel like if the protos gets on three or four base, like once they get maxed, and if if they just defend well, like your your mid army is gonna die. So you have to remax up of say ultras or whatever, and then your army might still die. I don't know. It's kind of a gamble. It's it's a boring game. It's a silly game. Um, I, I don't personally enjoy it. Um, I think phoenixes are fine as they are. I think the upgrade is kind of insignificant, though. I'll, I have to disagree with you on that. Like it's. Fleet Beacon is what, 300, 200? Like, uh, like, like you mentioned, like you would have to commit so heavily to it. You know, what if I just switch to Infestors? Like, good job, you just wasted like 500 minerals and 500 gas on a unit that you're not really going to use all that much. And you, and you have a bunch of them. It's, I don't know, it's pretty useless. I, I, I'm not for it, just because, I, I, like, it's, it's just, it's just going to be silly. It's like, oh, you're going to go mass meter, aren't you? Well, what if I just make 10, like you're dead, you know? I don't know. We'll have to see what, what like, top-level protoses can do with it. Um, I mean, I think Phoenixes are already viable against Mutas. Like, Genius has shown that, and GSL and such. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I just don't think, like, even Genius would get, would get the upgrade. It's just so expensive. It's I think it'll be interesting to see what that does. I mean, again, it's late game, but uh, the harass of the Phoenix as well. At six range, uh, the amount of things I could... Um, I mean, I, I wonder if it affects Graviton Beam. I think Graviton Beam is still a pretty close-range spell. But if one phoenix is made vulnerable and all the others are, are hitting something from a further distance away, that could be different too. Because if you think about it, a lot of times when you pick up something to harass with a phoenix, not all of them immediately shoot at it because of range disparity. But now at six range, they're all going to hit it instantly. So the second you pick up something, it's going to die every single time. Yeah, and there's less of less, less a risk of getting fungled and stuff like that. But again, it's yeah. so expensive. I don't know. I, 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 th I think we'll have to wait and see how it works. I, I don't think there will be much, much of a use for it. I agree. They should reduce the cost of the fleet beacon. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> QXC, your thoughts on the change? From a well, Terran point of view, obviously. When Jeff was talking about it, it made it sound like like Phoenixes would be pretty imbalanced and Zergs would, or Protosses would stop losing to Mass Mutilus, something which I am vehemently opposed. The more Protoss in a tournament, the less happy I am, so... <laughs> On that regard, I think the change is a really bad one. But then Katz was making it sound like Protosses would just try and invest in this dumb tech that wouldn't actually help them at all, and then Zergs would probably win more. So I think Protosses are generally pretty dumb and will just try and play with new things for a long time. So I think oh we should God. add this change and just watch as they lose. Now, the hold on one second. I, I heard you say... You upset my dog, first and foremost. You'll pay for that. <laughs> uh, you said Prodos players are dumb? I, I said I generally, Jeff. Generally. I don't understand. You, you of course, Eastern. are an exception. I think you're saying fuck now. I'm confused. Which is it? So, anyways, I think the change is probably <laughs> a, a fine one. <laughs> oh, God. I w they didn't say how much it cost in here, did it? They just said it's going to be on the fleet beacon? No, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Think of the time, too. How long does a fleet beacon take to make? Yeah, I know. It's, I don't know. I agree. It's too long for commitment. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so... And, and there's no transition, like, from Phoenix to Carriers, you know? It's like, I'm going Phoenix. Okay, I'll get Corruptors. <laughs> or, you know, it's... It's, a, it's like, you, you, you're you getting a fleet oh, beacon, oh. you're getting Phoenixes, and then, like, Mothership, so you can, like... Vortex into like mass Phoenix outside. I don't know. Like it, it just doesn't. It's just silly. Not gonna make carriers. We're gonna make tempests. You wanna know how the tempest functions? You fucked up. <laughs> if you get hit by a tempest, <laughs> a slow moving hard counter to Mutalisk. <laughs> fucked up. You fucked up. That should be in the subtitle of the unit. You fucked up. Stop it. There's a tempest dead ahead. Then we better move faster. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! The uh, the last change, APM CPM change. Uh, they're so they're renaming APM to be called Commands Per Minute. I like also how they say this in the blog. In in the blog, it says there's a lot of concern and debate regarding APM should be an accurate number or it should be a fun playstyle distinguishing factor factor like it has been traditionally. I just like the the accurate. How the hell they were making sure that everyone knew that their number was better than the old one. I, I just can't believe, like, of all the things that shocked me, okay, if you were to go back in time, 
to Brood War cats, to Brood War QFC, to Brood War in control. We were talking about this. If some dude, like, walked in through an effing wormhole and goes, guys, I'm from the future, listen. <laughs> APM in the future will get fucked up. They'll mess it up, okay? <laughs> and they'll fix it. And they'll call it commands per minute. They'll, they'll fix it to CPM. And then he, like, stepped back in the wormhole and disappeared. I would obviously ask, you know, like, what the shit just happened. And once it <laughs> out that, you know, a guy did come from the future, I would be so incredibly upset that it's even a topic of discussion that in the future, like, why are we discussing <laughs> 15 APM? It should be a click on the keyboard or a click on the mouse, and that's it. Oh, yeah. Shit. How did Blizzard ever confuse us? And they're like, "Well, we got this thing, okay? So you know, you know, normal time. <laughs> Screw that, right? We got Blizzard time now. How Blizzard time functions with actions per minute is different too. So every time you do a repetitive action, it's got to be different. It's that's not. It doesn't count. It's it's unique actions per minute, effectively, cost effectively within Blizzard time. And now we're talking about CPM. Yeah, which sucks too for <sighs> streamers. It's gonna be confusing as fuck. That's true. That is true. Yeah. I'll be like, hey, JP, what's your CPM? And you won't know what to answer. Yeah. Well, it'll be a low number regardless, but... Uh, <laughs> 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 uh, I... That... I don't... That change is just... It's just weird. I don't... I agree with I what, what Jeff I said completely. Blizzard messes up APM, and now they're trying to fix it in their patch notes. Like, my mind... <laughs> it's going to explode. So... I can't imagine. Here's the hard question now. Is there something that needs to be changed, and I'm going to go through each of you, as I kind of always do whenever a patch comes up, that needs to be changed right now for each respective race that is not in these patch notes? And start off with QXE, because I've been starting off on the other side of the Skype call. So, QXE, you're deep in thought. What's going on in the, inside that head of yours? Mm. <laughs> Just something, something about late game... I mean, it's really late game Terran versus Protoss. If they change Ghosts like this, and it might be late game TVZ, I guess the the hardest part as playing a Terran player, as a Terran player, is you get to a point in the game where if you you have to make a certain unit in order to not lose the game, but if they don't make the unit that you wanted to counter, you don't end up getting an advantage. So like. Zerg goes, Zerg goes Broodlords. If you don't make Vikings, you lose. If you make Vikings and Zerg doesn't go Broodlords, you end up at a disadvantage. Mm -hmm. And so it gets really hard to keep track of what the other races are making, particularly when Zerg can just, like, big army happens, Zerg has 40 larva, and you have to make a decision about what you want to build. Like, you're not going to know if you're making the correct army until you you see what's coming. Same kind, same kind of thing with Protoss. Like, if they remax on Archons or just remax on Zealots, you might not know how many Ghosts you want to make or how many Vikings you need to make, and so that's hard. I don't know how you fix it. It's just, I guess it's just a part of playing Terran that's been particularly frustrating. Yeah. And then the other thing is some, some way to match Protoss late game, like equal bases, 30 warp gates, pretty tough. I don't know. That That's just one thing that I've been having a lot of trouble with. I don't... I can't think of, like, a specific balance thing. Like, I don't know. If they made ma Marines, like, twice as good, then probably all these <laughs> other issues would go away. There you go. That's the fix. A lot of issues would go away. <laughs> a lot of players, too, man. <laughs> a lot of the players, true. True. <laughs> I'd have to buy, like, Terran clothes and start... <laughs> right? Rework my wardrobe. <laughs> really excited about this new marine change. <laughs> Cats for Zerg. Uh, what, what's something, or just in general, what are your thoughts on Zerg right now in terms of balance? Mm, I think each and every race has yet to explore a lot of things. I don't. I don't think. I don't think there should be anything that like. I don't think there's anything game breaking or like anything like that except for mules on the gold right now. And that's being addressed, so I'm happy about that. Um, mothership might be too strong, but I don't think... Is it Mothership or is it Vortex? Uh, well, Vortex and Archons, I suppose. Okay. Or just Vortex, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, 
most protoses don't use it yet, so maybe we'll see that change in a year. And yeah, other than that, other than that, I think I think that the game's still new. It shouldn't be touching it and raping it all the time. <laughs> Man, I'm still talking about StarCraft, aren't we? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, for me, I, I guess I I would have more. I would I would take what Cat said about experimenting, and I would. I would really encourage if anyone at Blizzard's listening, if anyone who knows someone at Blizzard's listening, and, and it, it, even if just we as a community, like, I don't like that the carrier is slotted to be removed. I don't like the carrier as it is. I think it needs more work, but I don't like that it's removed. I, to me, the carrier is one of the staples of StarCraft. I yeah. feel like that, the idea of a ship launching little alien invading ships and the way you could micro that in Brood War was just so amazing. It made the game better. It just flat out did. Um... I don't like the proposed replacement for it. Um, in, Star in, in Heart of the Swarm, I don't like the idea of removing the mothership. I think the mothership was uh, starting to get more figured out. I don't necessarily disagree with cats. I think Archon toileting an entire Broodlord army is, is a little bit too strong. But the problem I think people who get paid to handle this should, should handle it is that that function should still be there to a certain degree. Um, I still think the, the Protoss should have the ability to wipe out or do damage, not not wipe out, excuse me, that's obviously too strong a language, but to do damage to a big-ass Zerg um, super army with that, or some other way. But I kind of liked the, the idea of having this ship that had that ability. I mean, look at how Kiwi Khaki used that. That was some of the most exciting StarCraft II yeah, play we've ever seen. And, again, I'm looking at these things that make the game better, and I'm hearing them, instead of replacing it, or, you know, at least having something else fill that role, they're just removing it. And then, like, the carrier's being replaced by a 1A unit. There's no Tempest micro. You don't micro that thing, right? <laughs> you A-move with it. And every single time they take out something and they put in something like the Shredder that digs into the ground and does area of effect damage. Um, and they're like, well, wait, what if friendly units are in range? Then it doesn't work. It's like, okay, fantastic micro there. So we can, like, Viper grab a unit, tug it into the range of the, the Shredder, and then it shuts off until that Marine dies three seconds later <laughs> um, from A-moved other units, you know, like... I'm not okay with that kind of stuff. I really think Blizzard... And, and here's the, the thing. I say all this, and I know, I know for a fact, the reason why the game is subtly making differences and moving in that direction is because most of the people that play this game are not professional. They're not above diamond. They are people that want to have greater success with less skill and put less time into the game. And I think Blizzard might have taken themselves and put themselves in a possible situation where they're trying to appease the people who want to log in for 20 minutes every other day, you know, every other week, yeah. and play the game and do better, and then also try to appease the people where this is their livelihood. They do this every day for 10 hours. Or the people that, they don't turn on Monday Night Football, they turn on MLG uh, Winter Broadcast. They turn on, you know, they, they're watching VODs from the GSL that they, they couldn't catch. Um, those people don't want an easier, dumber, more simple game. They want a more difficult, micro-oriented, fun, engaging, and exciting game. Yep. So I'm, I'm, I'm just kind of waiting on that. Now, Jeff, yeah. I have one more question for you before we move on. I've been asking a lot of Protosses this, and no one's got it right, actually. Uh, but the other day, we uh, kind of were able to see this in a match at the uh, MLG Online Qualifiers. But can a mothership vortex another mothership? No, it cannot. Yes, it can. Son of a biscuit. <laughs> no one has got it right, man. It happened in Hasuab's Grubby, and still to this day, I don't see... I've faced Mothership versus Mothership. I guess I just... You're always vortexing the army, not the actual yeah. Mothership. Yeah. Usually the... Interesting. It was a, it was a weird game, um, <laughs> regardless, to say the least. That both players were able to get a, a Mothership out and vortex each other's army, one after the other. Very anticlimactic fight, but... No one's gotten it right, so I'm going to keep asking Protoss. I bet you Tyler would have gotten good. it right, Jeff. He yeah, probably well, knows. Tyler's not here, so you're <laughs> stuck with me. <laughs> he probably knows. He probably Thor's knows. Thor's ain't answered on the right side of things. <laughs> what it's it's weird Europeans actually know everything. They've, like, tested it. Yeah, well, Thor's TLO's name. tested it and sent out a spreadsheet. No, 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 I said, no, Thor's ain't just answered. Remember, we were trying oh, to get him Oh, oh, trying to get him on the show. Yeah. What did he yeah. say? Hi, I was watching TV. <laughs> that motherfucker. Guy thinks he's so sly and shit watching TV instead of coming on to the game. Let's talk about the season six ladder map updates. I I feel like 
we should say something about Zelnaga Cavern finally being removed from the ladder pool. Should, should we, Jeff? Do you want to like sing a song for us, or we already talked about singing? Did we? Jeff could Jeff could talk us a song. Well, I can't um, play any music, or YouTube will be like, "Fuck off, JP! You're not uploading." I'm this, so bad so. on the spot. Like, let's do a state of the game that's not in the middle of the day on Sunday. <laughs> I'll have a few drinks, and then I will sing you guys some songs. I promise. Okay. Well, regardless, someone needs to make a song because Zelnaga Caverns is out, as well as Era, Arid Plateau. Arid Plateau lasted what one season? Two? Yeah. One? It. No one. one no one liked that map. No tournament liked that map. I think everyone. Uh, uh, did you guys have it vetoed on the the ladder? I didn't. I liked it. No, I don't. I don't veto any maps. Just <laughs> this guy. This I vetoed Arid Plateau, so I was really happy when that got removed one season exactly after it was introduced. Yeah. Um. Well, I got a lot to say about maps. Let's do it in order. I don't want to. Well, actually uh, the uh, the maps that are in are Cloud Kingdom, Ellie, and Core Hall Compound. I think Core Hall Compound, Ellie. But Wrong. Jeff, the last time maps came up on State of the Game, a nuclear bomb went off in the community mm -hmm. and the target was myself, <laughs> Arctosis. I felt the great disturbance in the forest. I was in, Dis I I was in Disneyland and you guys talked about maps and I went I Yeah. Like, it it and rippled and through the Solo, community. Leia, Chewbacca, they're like, what's wrong? Yeah. I said I felt something. But then I was, anyways, I was going to make a terrible joke about Anna <laughs> and someone else. But yeah. <laughs> Jeff, talk to me about maps. Do you want to try to save us here? Because the community is just so upset with us not knowing our maps, Jeff. Cloud Kingdom is, in my opinion, one of the best maps you can play on. I think it brings a lot of dynamic with bases that have cliffs overlooking the back end of them, but then even more space behind that, so there's a lot of maneuverability. The towers function really nicely. They're not overpowering. They don't give too much information, but at the same time, they control the center. I really like that. The base layout allows for forge fast expansion with a accessible third, but not overly accessible, in my opinion. So it's there's uh, a lot of dynamic in terms of builds that Zergs can do, specifically against Protoss, but all matchups um, there. And then what I actually am most excited about in regard to that map is that it is showing indication that Blizzard has listened. They heard pleas for community-made maps to be put into the map pool so that people could... I mean, that just gives hope to the future, right? Now map, now map making has a reason. Like, a lot of people that might have been on the fence about it are like, wow, I can get recognized by Blizzard. You bet your butt I'm going to spend time on that. But also, it, it shows that Blizzard's listening to people in regards to maps. They're stop, they are hopefully stop putting in these maps that whatever three guys that are being paid by Blizzard to spend a day making. And I, I'm really sorry if they end up like, you know, they're really nice people. I just got to say, like, Aaron Plateau and those other ones from the previous map pool were like, so generic and bland um, and just bad, sometimes completely imbalanced. I'm really excited that, that the community is now being pulled into the fold in that regard and there's more inspiration, there's more time for that. So the map is fantastic, I'm really excited about it, and then the idea behind it I'm really excited about. Um, I, I hate to say it, but I haven't played any games on uh, the Core Hall one. Core Hall, I don't yeah. see it in any... Uh, I will play games on it, obviously, but I haven't seen it on any tournament circuit, so I'm not focusing on it right now. Does it bother you at all that on uh, Cloud Kingdom there's a giant S and it was used in Code S? Did you even know that? Did you see that, Jeff, or am I breaking your mind right now? Point it out. Yeah, it doesn't bother me at all. Like, whatever. Okay. If, if they come out with a map that, that has a giant, like, MLG island in the middle we of would it, never use that it. might be a little too excessive, yeah. but uh, <laughs> an S shape is okay. That's fairly, you know, that's fairly normal to see in, in normal geography. And then. <laughs> <laughs> Just a quick note on maps, I guess, to, to inject myself in the conversation previously. Sure, sure. Um, I used to be of the opinion where I would, I mean, on State of the Game as one of my platforms, I think I very specifically complained that a lot of the maps that tournaments have are um, not being played on the ladder, and then different tournaments have different maps, so it's really bad for the whole scene because we don't get to practice it. Uh -huh. I want to retract on that. I think that was actually an incorrect opinion uh, or uninformed or you know, not thought through. I really like that, that these map pools are getting more diverse because it rewards the people that put in the time to practice them. Um, I like that MLG's map pool is different from IPL and NESL, and they're all different. That way, when I have an MLG event coming up, I can be rewarded for my diligence, whereas somebody who just ladders every day doesn't get to, uh, to work on those maps and, and know what's strong there. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm kind of excited about it. Obviously, this is a slippery slope. Like If every tournament has 10 different maps, then it's, there's nobody that can practice that much. 
um, and we have to watch out for that. But but in general, as long as the tournaments kind of adhere to the rules, like close positions are bad, smaller maps are more dangerous, gold bases that are easily accessible are too um, are, are not good for overall gameplay. Um, so I'm, I'm just really excited. I'm really I really like the way maps are going in terms of StarCraft Two. Cats, what are your thoughts on the uh, the two new maps? Um, I like Cloud Kingdom. Yeah, I agree with what Jeff was saying at the end too. I'd I'd be happy if they didn't show the maps till the day of the tournament and they just released them. <laughs> You've never seen this map before, so you gotta play on it. <laughs> that would be no a cat's tournament. That's like the yeah, cat's invitation. Like, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Step to war first map. But go. um yeah, I, th I think Cloud Kingdom is a really nice map. Um but I, I don't know. It's 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 a different map as well. So we'll have to see how it works um, for every race. And then Coral Compound reminds me a lot of uh, Dual Side and the way it's laid out. But uh, I mean, they they both look pretty cool. Um, and 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 the most important thing is they're they're actually listening and and, and taking from the community. Like yeah. Was saying. I think that's I think that's great. I think that's definitely a step forward. Uh, one of the things that I hit on in the map discussion was that a lot of these maps just don't have enough testing on them. I'm sorry, but a hundred maps played on a certain map does not mean that it's viable, regardless of... That's just general stats. That's poor. So being able to see these maps in the actual ladder pool and having thousands and thousands of games played on them, probably not the highest level of games, obviously. It's not going to be all pros or anything like that, but it's still going to help when it comes out to figuring what's up with the map, seeing if there's anything that's really broken with it uh, on the small or grand scale. So really super excited about it. QXE, your thoughts on the map changes? Or the, the new uh, maps, rather? Yeah, pretty much want to second what Jeff said. I really Third. like his opinion. Third it. Uh, no, I just went back in time. Yeah. So I'm going to second <laughs> Jeff's opinion. I really like that they're putting the new... They're putting in community-made maps, which are going to be good maps, and they're also supporting the community and showing that they're, they're listening to that. Uh, and like he mentioned, it's a, it's a really good step in the right direction. I really like it. Yeah. And I, I did not really expect a huge uh, debate over that. It seems like everyone is in agreement with that. So we've got uh, really two more topics to talk about. Uh, I am Sao Paulo, as uh, Katz was telling me how to pronounce earlier. That wrapped up yesterday. And the winner, of course, was Violet, who is just on a tear as of late, really showing up every tournament that he goes to, playing so, so well, to able to take out Supernova. What did you guys think of the finals? Uh, I, I thought Violet was just on point the entire tournament from the, the games that I was able to catch. Katz, you're, you're the first Zerg, or the, you're the Zerg on the show, so I'll just throw to you first. I'm really bad at watching tournaments, dude. I'm sorry. I'm it's really all right. really bad at it. Yeah. That's, that's part of the... The deal with State of the Game is that we invite people on. There's a joke. <laughs> who I don't watch. That, but I was like, wait, that's too much of a... <laughs> who don't well, watch. you had to give me more of a notice then and be no, like, hey, no, dude, I'm, watch I'm not. Story. I'm not blaming you. It's just, it's part of the show. Like, we don't watch tournaments, I mean, guys. He was blaming you, actually. Yeah, and I, I actually, I have to echo that sentiment that uh, DJ Wee brought back. It was actually JP's fault. So. <laughs> 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 Jeff, did you happen to watch? I did. I watched right. every game. Um, I'm really happy. Violet... For people that don't know him, I got a chance to spend extensive time with him at Home Story Cup. Oh, yeah, he speaks right. phenomenal English. Dare I say the best from a Korean that I've seen. Um, MC's pretty high up there, but he... Uh, DRG. Violet, actually, DRG, I guess, yeah. Um, but, but Violet speaks really, really good English. And he's a funny guy, and he's really accommodating. He, uh, huh. It's kind of cool. It makes me almost a little bit envious, but of course we don't have the same atmosphere. But Koreans are really uh, clicky when they go to foreigner events. But Violet's kind of one of those like mother hens that really takes care of the other ones because he speaks English because he's uh, I don't know if he's traveled or what or whatever his life has taken him but he's just really strong and comfortable and um, he's a funny guy really kind oh you know just really nice so it's easy to root for him I guess is what I'm trying to get at um, but he's a hard worker he uh, he's had this like kind of a Rudy story coming up as like the Korean that a lot of yeah. Koreans picked I mean he was specifically targeted out in Code S because he didn't belong there. I can't remember who it was that said that. Wow, um, but one that. of the guys picked him for his group and said, Violet, I'm picking you because you don't belong in Code S. Wow. And he got smashed and sent away from Code S. And I'm not necessarily saying Violet is the new Zerg Hope, he's the new Code S superstar, but he is a very good Zerg who's worked really hard and he's come up from a place... Oh, it really doesn't like Violet, by the way. Um, he's come from a place where he was the underdog, so... 
to see him go up against Supernova, who everyone was like, oh yeah, Supernova will win that tournament easy, right? No problem. And I want to talk more about the whole tournament, but sure, specifically sure. the Violet match, pretty damn cool. Uh, Violet crushed him. Uh, yep. he, he was in control the entire time. Boom. Boom, self-sponsor hit. <laughs> QXC, did there you is. happen to watch the, uh, the tournament? No, I, I was following the brackets, yeah. and usually what I do with tournaments is I'll, I'll follow the bracket almost the whole time, and when I see a, ter a Terran that I believe in win against the Protoss or a Zerg that I also believe in, I'll watch those games, and that didn't really happen, so I didn't watch any of the games. <laughs> well, Jeff, let's have a conversation then <laughs> and talk about <laughs> this tournament. Uh, Supernova was the guy that was, just had to be down to really win all tournament long, I felt like. Uh, yep. His trip, the first map or two, and then uh, just to obliterate his opponent. Played very well the entire tournament long. Yeah, I mean, uh, moving away from Supernova for one second, but kind of talking about him, I think one of the cool storylines that IEM seems to always deliver on is that some unknown, relatively unknown player is going to make themselves known in that tournament. And before people jump on me like, he was already known, you just didn't hear about are you, Slivko. Are you going to real? Has, oh, Slivko, okay. You know, Slivko has been under the radar. He is fantastic. A lot of people have known about him for a long time. But when people fire off the top Zergs outside of Korea, That's they awesome. certainly don't list Slivko in the top ten. Definitely. And I think this tournament shows that he has the chops to potentially make a bid well, for that kind of place. Well, hold on, hold on. Yeah. This tournament Slivko shows that he's able to play... In a group with all Zergs and do well and rely on his EVZ. There was ten Zergs. It takes Supernova. It takes Supernova, the favorite of the tournament, down to the wire. That's true. Okay. In the quarterfinal, he did take that three, or he did lose that three-two. But group no, B. No, I'm, I'm not. I'm not saying he's the next. Like I, like I just said, he's not the next savior of Zerg. Or right. 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 Not, right. No, he's I'm fantastic. I think he's a great Zerg. Uh, I I Russia. didn't know him either until I casted the NASTL qualifiers. Uh huh. And yeah. I saw him play, and I was super impressed. I, like, he was up against Lenoc, uh -huh. and his decision-making just the entire time was better than Lenox. And I was like, okay, Slivko is playing better than Lenox. Okay, Lenox playing to save. You know, it, it was a risky thing to say, but thank God Slivko, like, proved me right, and he just, like, destroyed Lenox. Like, the guy's, yeah. the guy's amazing. I think uh, Slivko was actually in one of our quarterfinals at the MLG EU, I think against Rhett, actually. So he's just right outside of taking top eight. Uh, and the thing about a guy like, 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 there's so many players like a Slivko, when they place highly like that, but not not high enough, like in the top three or four, the community actually just ignores them. Like uh, a top eight finish or or nine finish, as it were, in a in a field of players of that caliber is so amazing. But if you don't have attention garnered to you for some reason or another, it's just another guy who did pretty okay, and yeah. maybe somebody will get talked about. So like like feast me. Yeah. Feast, Feast another, yeah. and you know what? Feast made his name at IEM as well. He I mean, did. that's where my argument comes up. Yeah. Um, these guys, they go to these tournaments, they travel from Russia to Brazil, and, you know, everyone's complaining about jet lag, but he should be one of the highest guys talking about it. And he plays, yes, in an all ZVZ bracket, but as far as I'm concerned, what all Zergs say is that in ZVZ there's a certain coin flip aspect, right? Uh huh. Um, but he made it out of that coin flip, and he, he played it super strong in a group of Rhett and, and Snoot, specifically, who are phenomenal players. And he came out as number two, um, just behind Rhett after giving him a good series. And I, I, I just, I gotta say, like that's that's the I, that's what I look for when when I am like, hey, we're doing Sao Paulo or Kiev. I'm, I go, okay, who's gonna make their name known there? <laughs> and circle around to me later because I do have some criticism for I am obviously, sure, or at least sure. some pleas, not necessarily criticism. But but that's what that was the cool storyline for me. The other thing that I I noticed too was like real um, to get back yeah, onto yeah. this Supernova. Everyone counts real out. He's like this. You know, um, B B uh, Protoss player who like left Korea and went foreigner a long time ago, and nobody really hears about him. Um, and he actually took again. Uh, he took Supernova down. I like some of those games where he was he was monster moding so bad over Supernova. I was like, this kid's gonna smash Supernova, and nobody in a thousand years would have called that, and he almost did. So I mean, kudos to Real, but Supernova. I don't know, maybe he uh, was looking over the horizon or something like that, but he went in this tournament saying he, he should win it easy, he fears nobody, and then every single match was a, a bloody nose series, you know, yeah. even in group play. Yep. He did only lose one game, but that series was really good. Uh, Jeff, I, I'm kind of asking you more out of ignorance rather than trying to bait the troll, but what what went on with the Muslim, and why was the, the thing on Reddit like yeah. EGBMs and then loses or whatever? What What did he say? 
Well, okay. So what happened was um, Violet before the match predicted that he would win 3-0. Okay. And like you should, every player should believe they're going to win every game. And when De uh, DeMuslim started to pull ahead, I think it was in game two, like Samuda's got killed, he wrote 3-0? Uh, question mark And uh, okay. uh, obviously a bunch of people threw their purses on the floor and started like <laughs> screeching and screaming. And It's actually not that big of a deal. It's uh, We play a competitive sport. These guys get really amped up into it. And as far as bad manner goes, that's about the most mild form of bad manner I could ever imagine. Yeah, um, yeah that's kind of silly. <laughs> it's not like you said something like, you were wrong to predict that, because then the Muslim actually went on to lose that game, which is, it's, which is I think, why people made a big deal about it. Because if you're going to say anything in a game, you better damn well win that game. So that that's the part where I think the Muslim kind of looked silly. You know, there's always these. Um, this is kind of random, but the the fighting game community always refers to us as kind of like golf claps when when a StarCraft player yeah. wins. Like, people don't realize that things like what the Muslim said is how we grow this by having attitude in these right. matches, like. If we're all just on a stage and pulling a nanny wall when we ask him a question, he's just like, it's all right. It's okay. Having fun. Meh. Like, I, I want to see Raw, and I think everyone else right. does, too. They want to see emotion. They want to see... Uh, I, I mean, you're, you're not going to see someone go up and, like, say, fuck you, you're a piece of shit to their face. Right. If they want to, I mean, it's fine with us. We, we'll, we'll take the views. And that should be looked down on. Yeah. Like, that's yeah. too much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take the views, though, regardless. I'm just saying, like, if, if, if yeah. Greg, if you're listening, feel free to, like, throw the fingers some more at some tournaments. We love it. But, um... <laughs> hey, Greg, if you're listening, E.G. says, don't do this. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. No, you're right. You're right. You're absolutely right. Like, actually, speaking of IEM again, one of the funniest things that I think I haven't yet had a chance to tease Greg about was he wins frickin' IEM Guangzhou. Uh-huh. And here's Greg, you know, standard, uh, yeah. the, the, like, the shoulder slouch forward, head tilted to the side because he's, like, an alien or something like that. And he wins, and he goes, and he, like, sits back. And it's like, wow, Greg, I can totally see that on the highlight reel for IEM. It's like, and Greg is trapped in China. And he's like, you know, like, are you kidding me? You, you know what he, he looks like, that gif of the um, the llama or whatever, where he turns his head real slow when he's chewing? That's what I envision Greg <laughs> is when he wins a tournament. No Greg emotion. Beat Boxer on stage after one of the most epic matches in the history of MLG, okay? Everyone in the place is losing their mind. The most unemotional and probably the only upset person in that room, including Boxer, is Idra. Yeah. Sitting in his booth going, I should have, he, he just never should have won a game. I should have, I should have, I should have won a long time ago. I, just, yep. I can't, I can't believe he, he, he took games off of me. And it's like, great, I want to shake him by the shoulder and be like, you just beat Boxer, and everyone's watching, and they're cheering for you. Yeah. So what? what Someday. What? Oh yeah. Will tear his off, and on his chest will be an EG tattoo. There you go. There you go. Then he'll have like nipple fireworks that just start shooting fireworks into the crowd. <laughs> yeah. Well. And you'll know. I mean, that's a scary sight. Please don't make it happen, Jeff. I don't know. Hopefully, it's not his contract. I guarantee you, you're just right now saying, "Shut up." We want that. Make <laughs> shooting nipple fireworks into the MLG. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. I we kind of want that. We kind of want okay. that. I'm serious. Yeah, you do. You talked me into cool. it. Uh, I am Sao Paulo. Is there anything else we need to... I mean, I, I hate when we, like, talk about these tournaments, and then I go read the form, and they're like, well, they didn't cover that well. And I'm like, well, what the fuck do you want us to talk about? Like, Violet played incredible. It's a great tournament for him to win. Supernova had exciting series all game long. Uh, I think, Jeff, you did a good job talking about Slivko and... These other up-and-coming players, a thing that IEM does well. Um, if, I, if I can be critical of the broadcast for a second, I don't know if it was because of the fact that Brazil doesn't have the best internet or, <laughs> or what was going on there, but the production was like non-existent in-game. Yeah. Well, that, that's the part I would want to hear more on, and that's, why, that's the part I was waiting for, like, my only criticism of IEM and, and what I would want them to push to go forward is, like, they, they need to have a unique overlay. They need to have, in between yeah. games, more than just that same commercial of the pretty hot chick walking at the guy in his dream and they're advertising some Ventrilo knockoff. Like, I understand they have to give nods their sponsors to so run those commercials, but then come back and have Carmack sitting in the training area yapping it up with, uh, Feast, who just got eliminated. What do you do now? You know, something like that. Or, uh, like, 
what each tournament needs to do and what I feel like IEM and again, notice, I, I don't work closely with the IEM people, so this could all be completely untrue, but this is my feel. Mm -hmm. I feel like uh, DreamHack distinguishes themselves with the two good hosts and the couch in kind of this like home atmosphere. MLG has the like North America arena of champions feel where it's like you're you know you're you're at you're in the war zone. It's like this is really exciting, you're at a soccer game type of thing. And then NESL is trying to do like the, the, the player angle, the red carpet, like you know, you're a superstar and oh my god, we're so excited to see you do this battle. But then I think of IEM and it's like Home Story Cup really, too. Home Story Cup deserves recognition there as well. Really innovative, um, you know, bringing the players close to the fans. That's all cool stuff. What does IEM do uh, amongst that, that group? In my opinion, Chill. IEM yeah. is riding on the coattails of knowing they have a check coming from Intel and, and knowing that they're <laughs> going to do another event. So they don't have to jazz it up. But I don't like that. I feel like they should they should be pushing the envelope every tournament to say, hey, at this tournament, like the free-for-all thing was an okay idea. Okay, so let's give credit where credit's due. That was okay. A lot of people were interested in that. They ran two tournaments in the weekend, and that was their, their, that was their off thing. They had Rotterdam go and, and kiss girls for for something. Right? They kissed him on the cheek and what? they got something for it. I didn't know that. Yeah. How did that guy get that job, man? What the fuck? Rotterdam's a slick, slick customer, man. But I want to see more stuff like that. I want to see IEM identify themselves as a tournament that when I watch an IEM event, this is the antics, this is the content I'm looking forward to, as opposed to a pretty good tournament, pretty good players. Usually some players bow out because it's at the same-ish time, or a lot of Koreans didn't go because who wants to travel to Brazil from Korea? 30-hour flight. <laughs> um, and, and those kind of things are the storylines that IEM has. Um, I, I just, I don't know, I want more. So I hope they don't take this as me saying, I am terrible, I love I am. I think they're phenomenal events. But I, I do think they could do more production-wise. Yeah, and I don't think anyone should uh, should argue that point. The thing that they do that, that they do well, I believe, is the, the on-stage stuff. I think they're really good with that, with Carmack doing the the very, very direct questions. He doesn't yeah. fuck around on stage, I like that. Um, but just the in-game stuff is really what, what I would touch on. It just sucks, because like, yeah, I'm an MLG employee. Yeah, it's a, another competing league, but I'm sorry. I, I just I had to bring that up. Um, in terms of the, the tournament, I think we, we've touched on that enough. Oh, Rob Simpson did a great mm -hmm. job all weekend long. Glad to see him out there casting some more. Uh, hopefully he'll pop up at some other tournaments. But other than that, let me take a look at the show notes. We got CODIS uh, round of eight happening pretty soon. We could preview that a little bit. Uh, we're not going to be doing user questions today because I don't really have a way to take... I guess we could take them from the chat. Do you guys want to do that? Want to do sure. some user questions? Sure. All right. More uh, is better. You guys already talked about the last round of GSL? But no, I, let, let's just talk GSL altogether. Uh, here's a link to the round of eight if you guys are unaware. But GSL this season, Katz, just to back up like you're saying, has been fucking incredible. Every best of three I've watched has just been downright incredible. I remember watching, um, was it was it the DRG Nest T Game 3? Was that the one that was ridiculous? So sick! That was a sick match, dude. You know why it was sicker? Because it was my strategy. <laughs> or them. I promise you. I have the logs where DRG admits to Ooh, it. Nice. DRG. <laughs> I swear, DRG is my, my mentor, in case you guys didn't know. And like... We like talked so much about CVZ and Bl at BlizzCon, and like the day after, like I watched that game with Drew, and like we were so excited, and like when when he was like growing the investors and taking them to the base, I was like, dude, that's me, that's that's my shit, that's what what I like discussed with him. And then the next day he like messages me, even like while while I was streaming, he's like, Jaja, which is like my student or whatever, like I win <laughs> Nesty using your strategy, no fucking caps. And I was so happy, I was so happy he won, like he's. My favorite Korean ever. Well, that Group D was I just think. incredible. I, like we said, Jeff, I think you were here for that. Maybe you weren't, but we were previewing A, D, A, B, C, and D for the round of 16. We thought and said they were going to be all incredible matches, and they were. Jokji Parting. Did you guys watch that series, Jeff? I watched a couple games, yeah. Did you watch the, um, the, the ESV map Cloud Kingdom, that game? I can't recall it, to be honest with you. Okay, that game was incredible. Go watch that if you haven't seen it. Um, I, I mean, QXE, did you watch any of the GSL? I've watched some of it, but I, like, I watched it a while ago. Okay. And I didn't watch much of the, the last couple of groups because 
the Terrans all failed. <laughs> <laughs> like, I've Final. discovered, after I watched uh, MMA play TVP in Kiev, uh -huh. I realized that MMA actually isn't good TVP. Ooh. Ooh. Did he beat I'm, Oz, actually, in his group? No, yeah, he did uh, beat Oz. Yeah, he beat no, him 2-1. No, 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 no. Let me, let me clarify, because... I was just trying There's to make you look like between, an asshole, don't worry about it, man. <laughs> There's a difference between being better than your opponent and understanding the matchup better than your opponent. MMA played better than Oz at StarCraft. Puzzle played PPT better than MMA plays TVP. And uh, I would... Well, I watched all the replays from MMA from Kiev, and... Honestly, Feast should have beaten him in the round of eight in Ukraine. Uh, and it wasn't that MMA played TVP better, it was that Feast had nerve issues. Uh -huh. One game he forgets Warp Gate. Yeah. Forgetting Warp Gate? Like, what? That's, <laughs> it was stuff like that. That was why Feast lost, not because MMA played the matchup better. And I think we saw that. If you watched Puzzle versus MMA, like, Puzzle played some of the best PVT I have ever seen uh, along the lines of what I've seen MC do against Terrans, and MMA just doesn't, didn't know how to deal with it. So those were the, the ones that I focused a lot on, and then like groups C and D, the groups A and B, like, there was an all-Terran group, I watched some of that, but then like, the Terrans all lost to Protoss, the Terran lost to Zerg and Protoss and Zerg, so I didn't really watch that. What I would really like to see, okay, so a prediction and something I would really like to see. Okay. If Puzzle plays a Terran in the finals, I think he will win. I don't. I don't think any Terran understands the matchup as well as he does, just from from what I've seen so far. And I really want to see MMA beat Alive and play MC because I want to see what M MMA can do now that. Now that I think he's realized that maybe his TVP isn't as strong as he might have thought, and if MMA has MC, and then if he were to win and play another Protoss in the finals, I think it'd be really interesting to see how he can develop his TVP in that time. I really would like to see MMA play a bunch of Protosses and get his TVP a lot better, because his TVT and his TVZ are both really, really strong, and I guess it's just the lack of good Protosses, so he hasn't focused sure. on that matchup as much. Sure. Jeff, two questions for you. What mm -hmm. in the fuck is going on with MC? Where he's just coming out and destroying everyone, and who is parting, and why is he playing so well as of late? The Protoss metagame right now is really strong, uh, specifically in Korea. I mean, just Koreans are, uh, Korean Terrans are starting to question themselves, and Korean Zergs are getting pretty frustrated with the the stuff. And like, I, I think now more than ever, Protoss have. Um, like, if you talked about Korean Protoss play, it was very all in and, and timing oriented. And obviously, they haven't abandoned it fully at all. There's still the two base Blink Stalker timing that is really strong. But even that, what, what gives people pause is that they're doing a two base, like, it looks like a two base Stalker timing, and then they just take a third. Whereas the Zerg has, like, ditched so much money into units that are now useless. Right. Because of Force Fields and Blink Stalkers, they are able to retain all their units. Whereas the Zerg can cycle out, and normally that's okay if they're on, like, four or five bases, but if they're on two or three, it's a lot harder for them to afford to throw armies away like that. Um, so just, I don't know, Protoss have started to really kind of uh, hit their stride with builds, and also, it, it, it bears mentioning, the maps have gotten bigger and bigger and bigger, and then more importantly, Naturals now have narrowed spaces and ramps as opposed to maps like, um, like even Belshire Beach, they corrected this to a certain extent. A lot of the maps had more wide open Naturals, which was really problematic for Protoss, but now if I can have three or four centuries defending a ramp, and then I can tech up, macro up, and be pretty greedy behind that, Sure. Protoss has a lot more options and a lot more strength, so they're discovering the Warp Prism, they're tightening down their builds, like we're seeing three or four Colossus PVT as opposed to six or seven, and then switching to Templar. Like That's a really, really difficult number for Terran to deal with, and then um, the maps have gotten better for them. So right now, Protoss is quite strong, and I feel like it's just kind of the elements of the game are, are kicking in for them. So our Protoss heroes... Um, MC doing very well, and yeah. then some of our new names like Brown Parting. Um, Parting is not man. necessarily a new name, but he's kind of hitting his stride. So yeah, Parting. Uh, we'll actually see him tonight as the first match tonight going up against ST in the um, MLG thing that's starting later tonight. But he is just playing 
incredible. Almost at the GSL, yeah. the MLG, wherever he's playing, he always seems to be winning. But uh, I want to go through the round of eight real quick, get some predictions here. Um, we'll start with this TVT alive against MMA. QXE, does MMA win that easily? No, I think that'll actually be really interesting. I watched a live play. Okay, so Alive is a little weird because he went in. Let me think. I'm looking at the group stages here. He, in his group of 32, he goes two and one. Yeah. And there's three Terrans. Yep. But then when he goes through his group A and B, he he wrecks both of the Terrans. Or he no, he only plays Gumiho. He only played Gumiho, yeah. Or no, he yeah, played MVP Alive, as well. No, he, he beats, Alive beats Curious, yeah, you're and right, Alive you're right. beats Gumiho, and then Gumiho 2-0 to MVP, and then 2-1 MVP. So Alive's, Alive's PVT looks really, really good right now, um, but maybe he's not as consistent as we no. would expect, because he didn't do as well in the, the first group stage. All right. So, I don't know. It'll be it'll be interesting. It'll definitely be good games to watch. Hard pick, QXC. Who wins it, man? I need I need a name. Um, live. All right, all right. Jeff, I'm coming to you for the PvP MC versus Genius. I mean, Genius has been a rising star. MC is just a goddamn star to begin with. Who wins that? MC is my pick to win the whole thing. So really, I have to go with MC. But yeah. Okay. Genius has been uh, electrifying and really exciting, but I think his 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 run ends here. Uh, Kevin, I got one more question for you. I know you need to dip out, but real quick, Gumiho Puzzle, who takes that? That's going to be really weird because, okay, so I've watched Gumiho's TVP in the past, and he's one of the more innovative players. I've stolen some pretty good builds from him, uh -huh. but Puzzle's PVT looks really, really solid and just strong overall. So I, I think Puzzle will win. But I don't think it'll be a 3-0. It might be like a 3-1 or a 3-2 even. Okay. All right. Well, QXE, I know you need to run. Uh, time is short. So thank you for coming on. And uh, hopefully we'll have you back here soon. I think a lot of people enjoyed you. What's your, uh, what's your Twitter so people can tell you to come back on State of the Game next time? Uh, my Twitter is Cole QXC, C-O-L-Q-X-C. Awesome. Go check it out, guys. Go follow them. And uh, thanks for coming on, man. We'll talk to you later. Thanks. Uh, what hey, do I David. if I click end call? That doesn't close everything, does it? Uh, nope. no. You should be good. Just okay. Okay. Thanks, guys. Take it easy. See you, dude. Take it easy. Oh my God. QXC, congratulations on being the first person to join State of the Game and leave and not fuck up the goddamn call. Congratulations, QXC. I'm gonna send you a bottle of permafrost vodka. I promise. Good vodka. Wow. Well. Good vodka. Parting Dongragoo, cats. The only Zerg left. Oh, fuck. You can't get it now because you just fucked it up. It's all fucked up. What yeah. happened? He left the call. He's not getting that vodka. Aw. Oh. Oh, he Dongragoo, like obviously. I think Dongragoo's going to win the whole thing. Oh, I think shit. Dongragoo's the best player in the world. Is it going to be a, Is it going to be MC DRG finals? Can uh, we agree on that? Yeah, or Alive, maybe. Alive is pretty sick, man. Give me odds on DRG not winning. Like, I'll give you... I'll okay, give you one of three odds. One of three odds? Yep. I mean... No, he doesn't win. I mean, that's pretty unfair. Because <laughs> they're in the round of eight. <laughs> give me one of four and I'll take it. hundred bucks. hundred bucks? I could lose four dollars would be wins? <laughs> I just did that math in my head, by the way. Um, Damn. One of three is my pretty strong... Like, it's not perfect math, and DRG is obviously better than... Most of the people that are in that, <laughs> not that MC. I mean, according. I know to he's you. gonna lose. It's it's like free money, but I'm trying to save you here. <sighs> Why don't we just say I bet that MC doesn't win, and you bet that DRG doesn't win? Hold on. Either one of them Hold wins. on. State of the game has never been a podcast <laughs> where people throw out I monetary think bets. Still bitter. It's all about shirts. He's still bitter because I bet on Thor Saint ah. that one time. Okay. It's all about okay, shirts. Okay, okay. Or Here's making, what we do. Here's making what we do. Thor Sane against Fruit Dealer. He gave me two to one odds. Thor Sane no, no. destroyed okay, Fruit Dealer. Fine. <laughs> That's Spanish for no one. Okay. No. Um, <laughs> no, it's not. You got it's that Silencio, one. Silencio, man. Come on. Okay, listen. MC wins. 
I get to pick the shirt that you wear. Cat, uh, DRG wins, you get to pick the shirt that I wear. If neither win, we both get to pick shirts that the other one wears. Oh, We're shit. at. MLG. What? MLG yeah, Columbus. MLG, obviously. I mean, okay, but I get to pick the shirt after. Oh, that's kind of unfair. I have to think of a sick shirt. Okay, I'll last. <laughs> that's unfair about that. <laughs> Fine. You mean less better than mine? <laughs> See how I said that? Less better? It's like the dumb way to say that. Um, okay, I agree. Get that. Deal. It's done. MLG Columbus, okay? Uh, hold on, hold on. I got it. On stage or off stage? Because you do have to appease the sponsors when you're on stage. Where will the shirt be worn? Where appropriate. Scott and I had a friendly gentleman's bet that, like, obviously... You can't just cover your jersey all day long and wear yeah. a shirt. Yeah. But if you get like a mini stage match or a stage match or something like that, you have to put it on or wear it. It has to be publicized. You have to wear it a lot. And when you go out at night? Well, I, I don't go out, cats, on the first nights because I am responsible. And the last day? The last day, sure. You can wear it on the last day, too. Okay? Sick. Done. Okay, bet has been done. We have the 14,000 people watching as witnesses, and we will uh, all be watching GSL as... I don't even know when the next games are. I guess February 15th, 16th, 23rd, and the final match is on the 3rd of March. So, uh, yeah, go tune into that stuff. Uh, that's actually it for me. Uh, I do want to take maybe one or two user questions. We've got about an hour until I have to be on air. Um, tweet at itmejp. Uh, for questions, and I'm just kind of going through these at random from uh, Gareth Yeager. He wants to know, what do you guys think of all these Koreans starting streaming such as Boxer? How will this change things? Is that going to change things, do you guys think? Because for almost ever, the Koreans have kind of uh, always done so well with being able to not, or not being able to, but choosing not to stream, and a lot of that uh, kind of hides their, their builds and their plays. So will this change things in y'all's mind? Absolutely. It squeezes out the little guy. Like, uh, the people that already have huge stream followings and um, people go there for their character, the personality, for the content they create, that's not necessarily a big issue. They still get bigger numbers than most Koreans. But the person that just plays games and doesn't say a word and plays music and doesn't really have a huge draw, I could watch that stream or I could watch a Korean stream that's doing the exact same thing, but it's a Korean player on the Korean server playing against better players. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they're a better player, 9 times out of 10. So I will watch that one. So what this says to me is if you're a streamer and you want to be successful, you have to, do, you have to change yourself. You have to be different from everybody else. You need to commentate. You need to talk with your fans. You need to upload replays. You need to do events with other people, cross-promote. Um, there has to be something that sets you apart. Otherwise, you're going to watch the generic Korean stream. Yeah, I think... Yeah, I think... Yeah, Jeff addressed it from a... Uh from a streamer's point of view, I suppose. Um, I mean, there's people like Vibe who had like a really small following and then he started commentating every game. And then he gets up to 900 viewers, you know, from nowhere. So, I mean, there, there's plenty of ways. Koreans are just going to be less Id identifiable always because they don't, they don't talk the language and they just, you know, they're in Korea. Like, there's a lot of them and there's a lot of good ones of them. You know, it's... So, so from the streamer's point of view, I, I don't think it affects it too much. Sure, they'll they'll take a, like a, a bunch of viewers and people who who just want to watch someone be really good at the game. But um, I mean, from from the audience point of view as well, I I think it's great. I think it's enjoyable. And from the player's point of view, well, they'll be able to study each other much better. I mean, I don't know. It's 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 all great. I think it all adds up to to the whole. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I do not agree with this next username, but regardless, I do have to ask, or I do have to say where the question's coming from. So, from J Big Dong, he wants to know: Can we get predictions on the Destiny slash In Control show mats today? I think we can, because we got one of the players here, Jeff. How's that gonna go? And historically, uh, what what's kind of the background between you two playing each other? What's the who's winning? I think he's won more than than he's lost. We've met a few times in the ladder and. I think that's kind of like a, a split. I think we both won equally there, but we played in an MLG thing and then two show matches, and I won one, he won two, I believe. Um, and that was that was a while ago. Like uh, that was, I mean, one of them he just got nerfed. The, that was right after the Infestor got nerfed, and then I won immediately after that. Uh -huh. And then before that, the other two that we played were before the Infestors got nerfed. And 
I don't know. Uh, he's his specialty is EVP. I think he would tell you that. Uh huh. Um, right now, if his play style, anyways, uh, maybe. No, I think it's. I think I don't think it is. Like, I actually, Ling and Fester just, is really strong. His Ling and Fester and CVD. Yeah. He just texted my brain. He said that's what he would say. <laughs> just his, no, his best right. win ratio in Korea is CVZ. <laughs> so I think CVP might be his worst. Really? But is CVZ regardless, is his best? Huh? His CVC is his best win rate on Korea. Really? Does he still open up with like the I'm gonna get he every tech? He opens some weird stuff. The problem, like Roach Bainling. The problem <laughs> is in the Korea server they're all so mechanical that they just like, he can just like metagame, they'll scout him and they'll, they'll still do the same thing. Ah. So, yeah, like, I don't know, he delays speed a lot. Like last time I played him, he delayed speed a lot. I was like, okay, I'll take the gold, you can do anything about it. Rape. So like, I don't know. Koreans. Cool story, that bro. That bothers me. Like they're, <laughs> yeah. But seriously, they're they're just like so mechanical. Sometimes it bothers me. I uh, I'm excited is. for the match because what this does for me is like I've been practicing really hard and mm -hmm. I've been practicing a lot better than I ever have been too. So yeah, I'm, I'm happy for the results, opportunity. Man. Yeah, I'm I'm happy for the opportunity to play. Like this is obviously not the most important match in the world, but there's still money on the line. People are watching, so obviously both players are going to try as best they can. And any time you can replicate that scenario when when tournaments are coming up like like we have right now, it's a huge benefit. Like I could sit down and play a best of seven with, with Destiny now, tomorrow, and, and the day after because we're buds and we play. But that won't have the same competitive spirit that it's going to have when we play later today. Um, so I'm really Should thankful for the opportunity. Eight. Yeah, it's in two hours. Sick. So I think I will win four to two. That is my prediction. The follow-up question I have is. Who's the better League of Legends player? Is it you or Destiny? Never played a game of League of Legends <laughs> in my life. I played, I played like, I played for three or four days. I played Han, uh -huh. and they that community does not agree with my Han play style. They don't agree I with could, anything. I, I played every game with the Blade Master guy, the samurai guy that spins around. I don't know his Han name. I thought I was been great. I was killing more than I was dying. I was having a good time. But then I noticed that there's like a chat function, or there's like the voice thing, and they're just yelling at me the whole time. <laughs> God, our theory is terrible! Like, guys, I'm a StarCraft player, I'm just trying to kill time between the beta and the release, and they're like, I don't care! <laughs> Get out! Swiftblade is the Han name, according to uh, chat, but... Uh, I think that's it for now. I have a show to get ready for as we're going on air at MLG.TV with the uh, final day of the Korean qualifiers. Tune into that. Uh, like I said, MLG.TV, Nest T versus Parting to start off the night. Cannot wait to see how that match goes. Everyone already knows the results already, but who cares? Still watch the replays. They're a lot of fun. Uh, Shoutouts, Jeff. Go. Sponsor reel. Roll it. <laughs> I'd like to thank my team, Evil Geniuses, our wonderful sponsors, Intel, Monster, Steel Series, Kingston HyperX, Beyond Gaming, and recently acquired Sapphire. We're really excited about 2012. We've got the Masters Cup coming out. Uh, Greg is going to make his return home to North America with his newly acquired Korean gaming skills where he will smash face and represent us at the MLG Winter Arena and then eventually Columbus as well as IPL and some other tournaments so we're really happy to have him um, for me personally uh, shout out to my lovely lady lumps over there ACP yeah you know me right over there <laughs> you're up with the computer and everything she's uh, I'm just kidding like can I also late. say that I'm a fucking amazing graphic designer? I like that I can look at her monitor and see exactly what she's looking at because of those fucking yeah. awesome gradients. It's like a, it's like a, you've given the gift of an acid trip to everyone. So it's. It is. I give the gift of acid tripping. You're talking about the monitor. <laughs> okay. I'm also wearing two hoodies. Think about that. that's another acid trip. Sick. Sick read. Yeah. Um, to everyone else, please do follow me on Twitter, EG Control. We've been doing uh, EG practice, so in Control tweet, uh, TV on Twitch. Um, do check us out. A lot of commentary, a lot of good music, and uh, it's been, you know, I, I can't wait for the opportunity to show you guys that it's been working. I'm really happy with um, how I've been doing. Obviously, there's more to go, so it's, it's a journey. Um, I will be at, you know, the MLGs and the IPLs and that kind of stuff, so please do come say hi. Um, not everyone necessarily shares his opinion, but I'm one of the guys that wants to meet all of you, so please do take the chance and uh, come introduce yourself and say hi. And uh, also, a lot of people are talking about this, so I don't know if JP will probably speak to this, but we are still trying to find a date for um, for Stay the Game. And yeah. uh, it's a little bit in flux, so we apologize, but the nice news is that JP does an amazing job of getting the VODs up to you guys pretty quick these days. So yeah. Thank you, everybody.
Uh, they, the mod will probably be up. <coughs> I don't know. YouTube takes a fucking long time to process, but I will upload the vod uh, as soon as the show is over, as well as the MP3. Might come a little bit later though, because I do have to rip the MP3 from the MP4. Bunch of technical jargon. Cats, save me here. Had a pleasure, or it was a pleasure having you on the show, man. Hopefully, we'll be back in the future. What do you got yeah. going on? Give your sponsor real work. People check you out. Yeah, it was a pleasure. So thank yeah. you for having me, first of all. And. Uh, I don't know. Like Jeff is pretty fucking good at that shit. Um, <laughs> Dude, Jeff's I, done it for 63 episodes now. So. Yeah. Well, thank you to Complexity and uh, our sponsors, the Sound Blaster, Cupad. Dude, PMY. that dog is not pit not happy about those sponsors. And I don't know what else. <laughs> yeah, that dog distracted me. If I forget any sponsors, I'm sorry. That's why. It's all right. And uh, yeah, follow me on Twitter, Cole underscore Cats. And Jesus, what else did you say? You said so much shit. I can't like. Well, like they I'm have sure every spawn. They have a sponsor. Oh yeah, like come, yeah, I'm friendly too at MLGs. I'll sign your shit. <laughs> 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 Cold no, cats. Thank you very well much said. for having me. I will sign your shit, literally. Thank you for coming on, cats. <laughs> Not literally. <laughs> But yeah, thank you. Uh, guys, that's going to be it. Hopefully you enjoyed the acid trip. That is uh, my graphic design. We'll be back. I don't fucking know when. Uh, I'm in New York, as you can see. Well, you see basically the office reflected in the mirror right now. Uh, I leave New York on like the 26th or 27th. We'll try to do another episode next week. But I, I, I like this time. Jeff, do you like this time slot? I mean, we can't do it because of artosis, but... I mean, that's the problem. Yeah. Artosis adds so much to this, and yeah. I like it, but we could never we could never, never be commit to it. drinking at this time. Yeah. And also, every time a tournament ever rolled around, stay the games out, for sure. Yeah, exactly. So, let's go back to Tuesdays. Let us know in the thread where uh, you guys want the show to be. The European audience definitely enjoyed today, and thank you guys for coming out, because uh, we had a pretty good audience for a show that was completely impromptu. Uh, but... Yeah. That is going to do it. We will see you guys. I don't know when. Itmejp.com for the VODs. Uh, YouTube.com slash itmejp is what that redirects to. Uh, follow us there. That's going to be the home of all the VODs. But regardless, we're out. Jeff, does your dog want to say goodbye? Is that what she's upset about? Come here. Sponsor shout out. Oh, sorry. I was looking at the other dog. He doesn't trust me because he knows it's Okay, there he goes. He just leapt forward. Come here. You're going to say hi to the internet. Oh. He fell over. <laughs> okay. Barristan wants to say... Did he mute his mic? I, I think so. <laughs> I think the dog <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. That is... Jeff, okay. we're out. We're done. I'm closing no. the show. He just disconnected my mic. Yeah. The dog didn't want to be on air. All right. We're out, guys. Thanks for tuning in. State of the Games off for whenever we do our next episode. Peace. See you. No pants, Fox.